Coming up next on Headline Humboldt, the Coastal Commission last week approved a permit to expand the North Coast's broadband infrastructure by building expanded fiber optic lines along three local highways. Also, a new exhibit by the Humboldt Area People's Archive and the Bear River Band of the Roanville Rancheria honors the restoration of the band's salmon ceremony. We'll speak with Hoppa's Nicole Riggs and Ruth Wortman, Cultural Director for the Bear River Band. Coming up now on Headline Humboldt. From the top of Humboldt Hill, this is Headline Humboldt. I'm James Falk. Thanks for joining us. Over the past 50 years and change, Humboldt County has been the home and center of a revolutionary spirit, one that manifested in political, environmental, and cultural movements that have marked our region as a land of visionaries. One local nonprofit, the Humboldt Area People's Archive, has made it their mission in recent years to collect and preserve the legacy and history of these movements and make them available to the rest of us as a source of learning and cultural history. Their most recent effort is a partnership with the Bear River Band of the Ronaville Rancheria to collect the oral history of how the band and its partners have worked to restore and revitalize its ancient salmon ceremony. The exhibit includes the voices of Ruth Wortman and Barry Bernard, cultural coordinators for the Bear River Band, speaking about the meaning of the salmon ceremony, which existed for generations before falling away in 1958 during what it calls the termination era. The ceremony is being restored and revitalized through the collective memories of band elders. Starting on April 6th, this collection will be on display at the Humboldt County Visitors Bureau. It consists of regalia and other objects, but most importantly, it contains the stories of how this restoration took place and what it means to the people involved. According to HAPA, since 1980, the Matoll Salmon Group, a local environmental nonprofit, has been working in the Matoll River to restore salmon habitat and populations which were negatively impacted from exploitative land management. Where have we heard that before? They realized early on that there was a need to combine the spiritual connection of the indigenous people with salmon together with science-based habitat and population enhancement efforts. In the disenchanted world we live in, everything sacred has been explained away and abandoned. Hearing these stories from the Bear River Band and glimpsing how they approach the natural world and its underlying spiritual currents may just help the rest of us rekindle a sense of wonder and realize that holding nature sacred and honoring that designation with good intention may just be the remedy we all need to lift our collective sense of alienation. But first, the news. This past week, the California Coastal Commission approved a permit for Caltrans and the State Department of Technology to expand the North Coast's broadband infrastructure. The project would see 156 miles of cable or fiber optic lines installed along two North Coast or three North Coast highways. The effort is part of a larger state plan to address technological inequities and address what it calls the digital divide. The project includes 49 miles of new cable along U.S. Highway 101, a short section along State Route 255 on the Samoa Peninsula, and five miles along Route 211 between Fernbridge and Ferndale. The project would eventually allow tribes, municipalities, nonprofits to connect to an expanded information network. The approved permit includes important stretches of additional work in Del Norte and Mendocino counties as a district-wide endeavor that is likely the first of many. State funding rules require that construction for the project has to be completed in 2026. And finally, here is our interview with the Humboldt Area People's Archive Executive Director Nicole Riggs and Cultural Director Ruth Wortman from the Bear River Band. Please enjoy. Once again, we're joined by Ruth Wortman. She is the, is that right, Wortman, Wortman? Wortman, okay. She's the cultural coordinator for the Bear River Band of the Roanville Rancheria and Nicole Riggs from the Humboldt Area People's Archive. Thank you guys for joining us. So uh, there's a lot to get to and this is a really fascinating story so I appreciate again you guys coming in. But Nicole, uh, can we start with uh, what uh, HAPA, the Humboldt Area People's Archive is and what it strives to do as sort of its mission which is exactly what's going on in this particular scenario. But explain yes, for us. sure, and thank you for having us here today. Uh, no, so my the uh, Humboldt Area People's Archive, or HAPA, is a grassroots uh, community archive. We've been collecting histories of change in Humboldt County from the 1960s to now, really looking at counterculture, back to the land, and all the threads that go around it. That includes a lot of activism, a lot of environmentalism, a lot of arts, culture. 
um, and a lot of collaboration in various ways, including cultural collaboration. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you guys get started? Was this uh, a brainstorm of among people who were sort of passionate in that sort of thing? Or? So um, it's perhaps no surprise, actually, that when you're looking at counterculture, there's a kind of a natural alignment with uh, um, indigenous cultures. Mm -hmm. Both traditionally have been um, resisting mainstream narratives and questioning what those are, those paradigms, whether that be um, cap capitalism, consumerism, and so on. So there's a kind of a natural alignment. Yeah. Um, now, in particular, in this instance here with Ruth and all at Bear River Band, um, we've been talking to a number of environmentalists, including some from the Matol Salmon Group mm -hmm. out by Petrolia, who have been since the 1980s uh, working on salmon habitat. Yeah. Um, but realizing that science only by itself is not enough to bring back full health for the salmon. And realizing that there needs to be a cultural um, connection mm -hmm. and um, the indigenous people of the land here um, have that connection. And so there's a kind of a natural uh, collaboration that arose. And then I'm sure Ruth can speak to from the Bear River side um, also how that came about. Yeah. One more question for you first. How did you, were you approached by them or did you, did, did you with Matol Salmon Group come to them to seek this out or how did that relationship initially come together? Sure. So as a historical archive, we take it upon ourselves to reach out and engage okay. with the community yeah, all yeah. the time. We do oral histories. And in fact, part of the exhibit that we're here to talk about tonight includes um, oral histories, interviews with both Ruth Wardman and also Barry Bernard, a wonderful um, other cultural coordinator for the Bear River Band. And um, we have their voices that you can listen to when you come to the exhibit that is going to be opening um, at Arts Alive in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So we conducted histories, we conducted interviews, and then we worked together in a really quite a large collaborative exhibit, actually. We have, um, of course, the Bear River Band um, at the center of it. It's their story. It's yeah. for them to say. Um, and then we also have the Matol Salmon Group. We have um, Stacy Shaver. She's a, a retired professor of anthropology at Cal State Chico and was very helpful in the development of this exhibit. Um, and we also have the Humboldt County Visitors Bureau and also the photographer Ai Iwane, um, Japanese, who has done some beautiful photography of the salmon ceremony. Yeah. So Ruth, thank you for joining us. And now um, there's a lot going on here with what this uh, you know, event in April and you guys had a soft opening in March, which we can show in just a few moments. But there's some really impactful footage that you guys had. But um, can you talk a little bit about um, how you came to be aware of this project and initially what you felt about getting involved and then what you felt was important to share as part of the oral history project? Um, absolutely. So when it comes to sharing stuff, it's, it's kind of like you have, you can only give so much and share so much. Um, so I was, I was, um, I received an email about um, them wanting to come and do um, some interviews. And so we, we, of course, have to follow our own policies to get it approved to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to line up. I think we had like nine tribal members and participants of the ceremony come to do interviews. And then it just kind of like rolled into this, what it is now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's just kind of like going with the flow of things. Now, so what did you choose to share as part of the interview and stuff? I mean, how did you guys shape that? Was it just sort of what came naturally during the interviews and stuff? Or how did that come about? Yeah, well, whenever I share, I always um, try to take my own thoughts out of what I'm sharing about and just kind of let it come naturally. Because yeah. what I, I usually do a little prayer before I do things like that. Yeah, which is a mark of humility. And I think the world needs a lot more uh, humility in every regard. Uh, but so now you guys had a soft launch, a soft opening in March, which is sort of just getting this stuff in the position I mean, and seeing how it looks and how it yes. feels and that sort of thing. Is that right? Mm -hmm. How did you feel about the event on that n particular night? After we hear from you, we'll go ahead and play the, the sound clip that we have. Um, I was a little nervous. Um, normally our, our items are displayed at our own museum. So this is like the first time we are putting them into somebody else's museum. Um, but we really feel confident in and our our new friends <laughs> to take care of our items. So um, there's definitely some, you know, prayers of protection that were put down, some medicine that was put down into the displays to, you know, help keep them safe. Yeah, uh, Sam, can we play that video clip real quick, just so people can get a sense of what we're talking about?
Now this is all leading up to an event coming up in April. What's the uh, date of that? I think I've got it here somewhere, but I don't have it. Sixth. Mm -hmm. Sixth. April sixth. April sixth, and um, it's six p.m. April sixth, Humboldt County Visitors Bureau at four twenty-two First Street, right? E exactly. Now uh, people can get a sort of a sense from that video, but talk about what's there. I mean, what what kind of items are there? How what role do those items play in your uh, tribal culture, and why is it important that people who are outside of the tribe get a sense of that? Oh, okay, so what is there is, um, um, there's my daughter's ceremony dress. Um, my was that the one that was up on the high? Yeah, okay. yeah, and my headdress, and um, there's some baskets that um, we have our acorns in. We have um, a male, a mannequin with male regalia on, and um, the dress and the male regalia is um, for protection during ceremony because when we go into ceremony, we go into the spirit land, so mm -hmm. we're there, and we're walking into worlds. Yeah. And so those items that we have on, they're meant to protect us. So those items are really sacred. You don't want to touch them. You, you do want to you know, say hello to them and acknowledge that they are alive because each one has a song, has a dance. Um, same thing with the baskets. Say hello, you know, let her know how beautiful she is. Uh, yeah. And then on um, some of the other cabinets, there's um, there's some deer antlers um, to represent the tools that we use. Um, there's lots of shells. There's a men's um, gambling drum and some sticks uh, to honor our men. And um, the stick game honors our four-legged relatives. Um, so yeah, each each item has a spirit, and you know we we talk to them and acknowledge them and. Right now they're awake. Um, when they come down from being displayed, they will be put to sleep yeah. and they will go to rest until ceremony. Is that a ceremonial action that you help take to facilitate them waking up and going to sleep? Yeah, whenever I wake them up, I say good morning to them. Yeah. Yeah, and let them know how beautiful they are. And that is a beautiful thing, I <laughs> think. And I, I mean, I can't, people who know my brother work and the podcast I have and whatnot, I really, really deeply appreciate, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, but I deeply appreciate that sort of that sort of uh, approach to living in our world, and I think that we're, we're missing it. One of the main points of this is that the uh, Salmon Festival, the Salmon, I keep calling it Salmon Festival, the Salmon... Um, uh, ceremony. Sam, yeah, sorry, Salmon Ceremony. Um, it was an important part of tribal culture, and then it was missing for a long time, probably mm -hmm. because of problems that had happened with culturally being subjugated by, you know, the greater white community or whatever else. Can you talk a little bit about how it was resurrected and how important it is to have that continuity for the tribe? Yeah, so um, one of the elders from the Salmon, um, the Salmon Council um, had um, Michael Evanson get a hold of the ENR director at the time, who was Hank Bernard, mm -hmm. and let them let them know the struggles that they'd been having for the past, I think they said 50 years. Um, trying to fix the habitat, adjust the habitat, all these means to help the salmon survive and have a better, a better journey. Yeah. Um, David had told Michael, we need, the, we need the indigenous people to help us. And so Michael got in contact with him, who, got in, who came to me and was like, hey, here's the ceremony, we need you to do it, this is that, and this is this, and we just did it. Wow, yeah. so how, how did you guys, uh, rebuild it? I mean, how did you find out what was involved and all that sort of stuff? Lots of talking to elders. Yeah. Um, and not just Bear River. We got, you know, we talked to Karuk elders. We talked to Yurok elders. Lots of elders have helped us get an understanding of what was what. And um, there is some some uh, documents, but they're very vague. Um, uh, so it was a lot of elders who were like, I remember this and that. And those those people had this and they had this. And so, you know, it was a lot of educating from our sister tribes who helped us understand like, oh, that, I did hear something about that to help. Cause it's only one day right now and it's supposed to be 10 days. So we're, oh, it's supposed we're, to be a 10 day ceremony. we're okay. working on getting the canoe and um, learning how to build the houses because we built houses on the beach right there. And so it's a learning process. It's not complete yet, but we're, we're getting ready to do um, a salmon ceremony at the mouth of the eel, which mm -hmm. an elder had came and said, you know, we're supposed to be doing this at the eel river. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we're gonna do that too. <laughs> so what, what's the date for that? 
We haven't picked a date. Okay, but, but there, there is a, f a physical ceremony that happens that people can attend. Yes, in April. In April, and yeah. is that the same date, the April 6th or no? No, um, okay. April 13th and 14th is when we do it at the mouth of uh, the Matul. Okay. Um, so the 13th is a demonstration day, so people who want to learn about it and are unable to come to the practices, they can come that day and get like talk to dancers and talk to the head woman who's going to be leading the ceremony so that they can understand how to be, what to wear, what to, what dance moves they should do. Um, but then the, the 14th is the ceremony. So that's the day where everybody is going to be, you know, in that place yeah. ceremony. Now, so I'm, I'm going to try and make a connections here that maybe I'm, I shouldn't be making. But like you talked about how like with the regalia and stuff, there's a spirit. And this ceremony, is this to honor sort of the, the salmon spirit so that they will feel encouraged to come back up into these, that watershed? Is that so basically this, right? This, um, this ceremony is to help the spirits of each salmon be strong because they have to fight the currents to go up. Absolutely. It's also to honor and thank the, the salmon who are going to go out to have that long winter or that long summer Because they're the actually water. passing each other, yes, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So you have salmon coming in and you have salmon going out. Yeah. And so like this, this is, the whole ceremony is really to honor every step of their journey. The dance moves, the men are doing the dance moves that represent the men spawning and then the women are doing dance moves that represent the laying of the eggs. So every piece in the canoe that comes down and goes out, that represents the, the journey they have to take out. Yeah. So there's, there's steps to this journey that honor each phase of their life as salmon. Yeah. yeah. That is going to be something to, uh, to witness. Can you talk a little bit about how important it is to uh, your tribe and to yourself, to people you know, that you're able to resurrect this and make this once more a formative part of who you, who you are. I mean, because if something's lost, a lot of times people just throw up their hands and they say, well, there's no getting it back, but that's not where you guys are at. You're mm -hmm. like, we're going to reach back into our history and pull th forth something sacred. Yeah. How important is that? It's super important. I think that the action of, of doing the salmon ceremony and bringing it back has given the membership courage to you know, say, I do want to participate in ceremony. And I do, because we have other ceremonies that we were bringing back. We're going to be working on the acorn ceremony. Mm -hmm. So it's just a step in that direction of bringing that, honoring our ancestors by honoring their ceremonies and doing them the best way we can. Yeah. Before the show, we were talking about, you know, you had been talking with elders about this, and you also mentioned it during the show. Can you uh, talk about how important it is for the youth to see this? You're the youth coordinator, um, which uh, you mentioned that maybe you're not as young as some of the youth that you're dealing with, but mm -hmm. uh, I think you are. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, what kind of example it sets and why it's important for young people to get a, that kind of glimpse of hope? There's so much strength in ceremony. Um, there's so much strength in being acknowledged. Um, when, when we first started doing the ceremony, we had very little male participation. Um, we had lots of female participation, but in this past um, ceremony, we had balance of male and female. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because those young men who did dance in the first ceremony, they, they, they brought that inspiration back to their, their friends and their relatives. And, and I think that that's what encouraged them to like, okay, I'll go with you this time, you know? Yeah. So it's just, and then when we get to go to schools and talk about, you know, the ceremony, you know, sometimes we'll have a participant in the classroom and we'll be like, can you come up and help us, you know, yeah. demonstrate how this dance goes. Um, and so they get that opportunity to show their, their, their peers, you know, their medicine and it just inspires them and lights that fire that, that is needed to do it. Yeah, and I think probably inspires a little bit of pride in their own mm -hmm. person and their own culture, right? Yeah. Um, Nicole, I mean, um, you guys are doing a wonderful thing here. There's, uh, I would, uh, if I were involved in this situation, I would be a, a little bit scared about the, uh, the sacredness of the ceremony and then being involved as an outside organization. Can you talk a little bit about the sensitivities that you guys are trying to bring to this? Because it, this is obviously not your culture, but you're trying to preserve it. Um, how do you guys parse that? That's a, that's a great question. Um, so it helps that we have a clearly defined mission as a historical archive. Yeah. We document and we preserve um, what has been happening. 
um, the telling of the story belongs to the people whose story it is. Yeah. And so that's Ruth Berry and all at Bear River. So our role is really one of holding um, the materials and then sharing with the public um, those histories. And that makes it easier. And then I think beyond that, it has to be a complete and utter faith mm -hmm. in moving forward. And um, it is something that I remember at the first salmon ceremony that I went to, um, and then I heard Ruth speak about it, and she said, um, you do it um, with a good heart, in a good way. Yeah. Um, and I take those words as the words to guide how we're approaching this entire exhibit, and some things may still be unknowable or unknown, yeah. um, but we go with faith uh, with a good heart, in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. I think intention has a lot to do with the outcome, and also whether you know you, to avoid some of the issues that w have come up in the past with exploitation and whatnot that is not what this relationship seems like from the outside in and i think uh, you're both brave for taking it on um can you talk a little bit about uh, on, on the hapa front what kind of other things you guys have done in the past and if people are interested in getting involved in this sort of thing or have an archive of things that they want to yes. you know, share with you what can they do and how can they get more involved Yes, and thank you for that, because we do, we are actively collecting materials. Um, in fact, um, I do want to mention the Salmon Creek community and thank them. They just donated their entire community school archives wow. to our organization, and so we're diligently um, working through those materials. Um, for people who have materials that are of historical significance here, again from the 1960s onwards in Humboldt County, um, then uh, please do reach out to us. The best way is through our website, HumboldtAreaArchive.org. Okay. Uh, there's contact information there. Uh, we can also be reached by Facebook or Instagram. Um, and we, um, we are absolutely passionate about preserving the history of this region in all its multiple facets. Um, because it's very important to help us move forward and find solutions, especially collaborative solutions moving forward, is to be able to reach into the, the richness of our own past. And some of the examples we have of activism and of uh, questioning mainstream ways of doing things and finding perhaps more communal solutions. Um, so that's all part of what we do. And again, going to our, our website is the best way to, uh, to connect with us. It's interesting because a lot of the issues that you are covering and collecting stuff about are, were often contentious in their moments. And so it seems like a large part of this might just be healing in the reviewing of the history for both sides. I mean, it's not as, I mean, would you say that you're, uh, these collections are collected for a particular group or for the whole community to examine as a whole? I mean, how would you define I, that? I, I hope that it is for the whole community and there is uh, no saints in history. Um, <laughs> and so we do well to look uh, deeply at both those that perhaps we have a natural inclination to admire mm -hmm. and to question them. And then those that we have perhaps an inclination to um, already reject or uh, criticize and to question that as well. And so it's great to have the historical materials. It's your first hand evidence to grapple with this past. So um, a healing, I hope so. Certainly um, an opening up and a sharing. Um, and then let's, uh, let's work together on, on a path forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it seems like you guys have, oh, I guess I should just ask the question, are you guys doing a lot of these presentations. So this is the first one that I've really been uh, alerted to. But I mean, it's a, I love oral histories. I think that that's the most impactful way for people to kind of encounter um, history. Mm. And so uh, are, are there more of these kinds of things planned or is it just uh, as people come to you? Yes, um, there are, uh, there, are bo there are both more planned and pe when people come to us, we can also develop more projects. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in particular, I would like to speak more to the exhibit that we're doing here collaboratively sure. with Bear River Band. Um, we want to really expand on it and have a much larger exhibit in the fall and we're working on securing funding for that and we want to have a greater section of oral histories as part of that yeah. um, and perhaps have a greater educational component as well. So that's very much part of it. Um, hearing the voices of people and being able to read their own words um, is really a great way to pass on to transmit history uh, without putting oneself in the way. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting in this particular project because you have the nexus of history, but then this generation trying to reconstruct. So it's like this strange moment that's beautiful and scary, I would imagine, but also, you know, exhilarating. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about, uh, I kind of touched on this in the first question, but 
What risk is there for a, a native woman or a native man to share this kind of stuff with a community? And how did you satisfy yourself uh, coming into this that this was going to be an okay time to share? That there was that you could trust this process to be not exploitative. That's where I I check in with my spirit helper for that. Um, I walk with Creator, so I let Him guide my path and I let Him, you know speak for me when I don't know what to say, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in the moment, I, I check with my spirit helper. If my spirit helper is telling me not to share something, then I won't. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the times, I don't like leave it up to like my own thoughts to say what needs to be said. I let it to be what it is. Yeah. You know, I let Creator guide me. Like when this ceremony happened, I had a lot of doubts because it was scary. Yeah. Um, but um, I just had faith that Creator put me in this position to be this person for my people, and that's that's where it is. Yeah. And of course, there's always going to be something that happens that's out of anybody's control, and sure. and there, there's no way you can avoid that consequence, <laughs> right? <laughs> so well, that, that's <laughs> interesting. The last I mean, we have two minutes left, and one of the anecdotes that you told me uh, before the show was that that dress that was up there was important to you personally, <laughs> and you had your arms outstretched during that video. Can you explain to the audience what that was about <laughs> and uh, what was at risk in that particular moment? Yeah, so the, um, in that video when I was singing, um, I was sending that prayer up. Um, um, so when I sing my songs, I don't just sing my songs for people to enjoy them. I sing them with a purpose and intent behind them. And for me, like every movement, every action has an impact on that prayer. So that's what I was doing. I was just sending my prayer up as high as it could go, as far out as it could go, and yeah. just, just going with it. Yeah. And there was a moment you were worried about the dress too, right? Yeah, I thought the dress was going to fall down. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, please don't fall, please don't fall. Like, you're strong, you can do this. <laughs> I love that. And it's your daughter's dress, you That's said? That's my daughter's dress. Wow, how many hours were went into the construction of that dress? A lot of hours. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you guys. Uh, this is an impactful discussion, and I'm flattered that you guys brought it to us. And anything I can do in the future to please, you got one more thing? Yes, I would like to uh, add just as a reminder for everybody to please come to the grand opening yes. of, of the exhibit. So that's at Arts Alive. That's mm -hmm. Saturday, April 6 at 6 p.m. Yep. Yep. at the Humboldt County Visitors Bureau, 422 First Street. Excellent. Yes, and uh, thank you for repeating that. And uh, you should be hosting the show. You do a better job at it than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. I appreciate it, and we'll see you again. Thank you. Thanks. Too. That's it for this evening. As a final reminder, the Humboldt Area People's Archive will host the grand opening of its Salmon Ceremony Oral Histories exhibit at 6 p.m. on April 6th at 422 First Street in Eureka. Stay tuned. Stay informed.